So this is going to be a new series that I'm going to be starting alongside with two other filmography stuff. I'm going to go through a director's or actor's filmography throughout a couple of months or even a year. It really depends on how much movie there is. This video is on Scorsese. There's going to be one on DiCaprio and then one on Nicolas Cage because why not? I'm going to try to line up Scorsese and DiCaprio with their new film Killers of the Flower Moon. I think that's what it's called. Currently, as of recording this, it doesn't have a date. This is going to be released in December. All of these three filmographies are going to lead into 2022. So I'm starting with Taxi Driver, which is not his first film. I'm going through genres. And out of these three, Scorsese has the most one-offs. Taxi Driver, it doesn't have a genre. It just says American film on Wikipedia, which you should totally trust. After watching it though, it's probably thriller, probably. But whatever, I'll just start with Taxi Driver and it's real interesting. It's basically a story about how a war veteran who has to go into society and fit in society not have to worry about his ptsd or mental state he just has to be new york and fit in and that fitting in is being a taxi driver that's his job throughout the film you see different people not gonna lie though i wish the whole film was that I thought man he was gonna go through like this journey meeting models politicians mayors all these different people and that happens but it's more than that it's more meeting different people in different types of areas in new york city causes him to make certain choices throughout and then it would eventually lead into chaos which i thought it was gonna end tragically but it doesn't surprisingly every night he has to clean up blood off of the backseat of his taxi he probably hates it but he needs it because he needs money he needs somewhere to live and so the three i guess three main people i feel like there's more but the three main people that he meets throughout this movie is betsy a woman that he becomes infatuated with jodie foster who's like 12 or 13 she's very young and she's a prostitute and a senator so betsy he truly loves her he's like in love with her he doesn't outright say it but i was shocked to find out that in his first try and attempting to ask her out he got it which was like oh okay this man seems to be you know in check but on these dates clearly he's not he's awkward not shy kind of weird and off because at some point he can just kind of go off and be like i don't know something might trigger during on one of these dates he decides to take her into this like porno theater which is apparently a thing back in the day don't really see those anymore but the moment where she's like nope i don't want anything to do with you and in response he acts horribly he says that he's like any other woman and goes to her work creates chaos and whatnot and this will start a whole downward spiral of meeting real shady people and not making good decisions at all and no one is there to help him there is one scene where he writes a letter to his parents but we don't actually see them i don't know if this is like confirmed but i don't think his parents are real or even alive or maybe he's dead according to his parents maybe the marines came to their house and say that your son is dead after that he like gets a gun because he meets scorsese in this film he cameos as this passenger in a taxi he has a gun plans to go kill this lady that inspires him to you know go get a gun and use it for later on to kill the senator because the senator was also in a taxi and the one thing that travis hates is new york city he hates this place but he is still here because he probably has nowhere left to go and the senator represents like the system where they don't really care about veterans in this time frame where they're like gone to the war but we're not gonna help you with money or your rental state at all thank you for fighting our war and good luck travis plans to kill him later on because he's like you're great man you're changing the city but i don't know the time frame i'm gonna assume that after he meets the senator in a taxi it's like months later there's no way it's like days or weeks later but after a certain amount of time travis sees that there's no change well this motherfucker is lying and plans to assassinate him all these agents they see him runs away he's there to see wrong about the whole system and like society not caring about war veterans they just have to deal with it Jodie foster now whenever he meets her turns out she is a very young prostitute and there's a certain point where she tries to suck him off and this is the one time where he makes kind of the right choice of like oh wait this is wrong you're 12 you need to get out of here seeing a 12 year old being a prostitute making money this is the one time where he can make the right choice and something good can come out of it but despite his efforts jodie foster's character seems to be brainwashed and kind of sucked into this world because she doesn't want out she's doing it because she likes it or it's most probably she's stuck in the world someone has her like captive essentially if you do this we'll give you money if you don't we'll kill you and your family there's no way absolutely no way she's like yes i enjoy this and then they even bond in this diner scene where he takes her out gives her pancakes or whatever and this is the one time well i guess his dates before the whole theater thing with betsy was the one time where he got to bond but this scene with him and jody foster it was a good scene because it felt normal both of them were weird being in weird positions talking to each other and bonding was a really nice moment and so after his failed attempt to kill the senator he decides to go to a brothel and save jody foster he like kills everyone he gets shot in the neck he's fine okay he's able to kill everyone and he goes into a coma this is clearly on the news but he's seen as a hero travis isn't really a good person i guess he is but if you set him off he's willing to do impulsive things but after all this jodie foster's character she's back home with her parents her parents give travis a phone call 
call saying they're thankful now that their daughter's back with them. The one good thing that Travis did, everything else was really in a gray area or just kind of like probably shouldn't do that. Probably should have been, I don't know, prosecuted and an attempt to kill the senator, but he's known as a hero. He gets to see Betsy one last time in a taxi, saw him on the news and whatnot, newspaper, acknowledges that maybe he is different, but in a good way. But once she gets out, he like looks at like the mirror and then that's how the movie ends. So not only is he, you know, known as a hero, but he's not really a good guy, like really not. In the end, the movie ends with a very kind of dark, not dark, but unknown kind of like what's gonna happen now because Travis is a person who's a bit deranged. If you set him loose, he will go crazy and he'll maybe kill you. He needs help. He needs someone to talk to because he's a war veteran, but because of society and the system and more specifically New York because he hates New York, he's out on the loose, but is known as a hero for killing all these people, bribing all these little girls. It ends off in a way that's interesting and kind of makes the question, oh yeah, I guess New York City and just the way things work and the way they treat war veterans is very flawed and should probably change. At least that's what I got out of this film. Maybe it means something else. Also, why did he cut his hair into a mohawk? Never got that. Is this based off of like a real thing? I have no idea. So in the end, Taxi Driver. It's pretty good. Still a good movie. Question whether Travis is the bad one here or society or more specifically New York City. You have Travis out on the loose now and no one's really gonna do anything about it. But yeah, Taxi Driver is pretty damn good. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far and thank you for watching.